So welcome everyone to the Stromzy community call of 14 December. And just a reminder before we start that the next call on 28 December is canceled as for most of us that's in the middle of the holidays. Uh, we have also, okay, next point on the agenda is PRs and issues. There seem to be some PRs to discuss. The first one is about having the empty environment variable in the installation files or or not. So anyone has any thoughts on this, Paolo? Yeah, so I already made my comment there, right? Here we are saying to, um... Yeah, to have the the MVAR in Elma charts, but not having so yeah on the Elm charts, but then we have in the YAMLs or vice versa. So I would be consistent, to be honest, uh, having or not on both. And I think that what we have today in the YAML is useful, uh, even if the MVAR for for feature gates is empty. It's a way yeah, for people to understand that then they can set a feature gate to enable the feature gate there. Uh, instead, the proposal is about removing from the Elm charts, right? Uh, so my opinion. So it was doesn't. To review it, that. it doesn't remove it from the Helm charts. It basically just doesn't set the environment variable when it's empty in the Helm chart. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. So yeah, my opinion was about refusing and having the the same. So having the empty environment variable as the installation YAMLs. But uh, yeah, it was just my opinion. So if you are okay, if other maintainers are okay, we can approve and uh, we can move forward with this and merge. I am not a yeah, great user of Elm charts. So maybe uh, it makes more sense for people using Elm charts than me. So for this reason, I will leave to the others to make a better decision. <laughs> I'm not sure it makes difference to the Helm chart. It still only changes how the YAML is generated at the end. Yeah, so so it will generate a YAML without the MVAR, right? Which is different from our YAML installation file. But yeah, if you're okay, I can even approve. It's not a strong opinion, so. Well, I, I raised this point because I'm not sure if it's good or bad, so. Yeah, again, as the not great user of M charts, I don't know if it's good or bad either, so. Well, I think the problem is that it impacts the YAML installation files as well, because they are rendered based on the Helm chart. Right. So it will disappear from the YAML, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, to be honest, I don't know if it's so if it's fine, to be honest, yeah. Okay, so should we close it and reject it then? Yeah, in the end, it was my own opinion, so I don't see any other maintainer here on the call, so.
So like this, does this make sense? Yep, there is just a typo on uh, environment variable seems to be useful, first line. Okay. Uh, then I guess the next PR for discussion. Yeah, I have just started this one. Uh, it's more or less to share with the community what's the plan. So, you know, we are working on the migration uh, of Zookeeper cluster to, to a craft cluster. Uh, I kind of uh, broke up this in three phases. The first one, which is the one that I have been working for the last week, is uh, uh, reflected by this PR, which is about having uh, the happy path of migration for a Zookeeper cluster to a craft cluster. Uh, then the next will be uh, the rollback, uh, because when you are in uh, dual write mode, so when the metadata are written uh, both on uh, Zookeeper and uh, Craft, you can still roll back and um, yeah, come back to the cluster to be Zookeeper instead of finalizing the craft migration and then the the step three uh, in my head was about uh yeah removing zookeeper because at the end of the migration right now you still have the zookeeper cluster which should be removed now um in order to to yeah to make it uh, uh and yeah the other point to make is that uh, uh, everything right now on my side is working uh, with the kafka 36 which was kind of patched by Luke, uh, but we have to wait for 3.7 for having my migration working properly. Uh, but in order to not block this work, uh, I think that um, uh, I was thinking this way, uh, and at the same time, even for having some review along the way from uh, maintainers, from users, from the community, instead of uh, having a big review at the end, uh, I was thinking to maybe closing this PR, um, having uh, the, um, the migration branch, which is right now in my fork uh, of the operator in the official uh, operator repo, uh, so that I can open PR against that branch for the first phase, then uh, for the rollback phase, and then for the third phase about Zookeeper removal, so that uh, for each PR I can even have uh, you know, a kind of review from uh, uh, the, the community and focused on the specific changes for that specific phases. So uh, that was my um, idea to move forward with this. Um, but still, nothing that we can merge in the main because we don't have Kafka 3.7 yet, uh, which allows to, to, yeah, to test and enabling people on main to test something or to use this um, feature as a kind of preview. Uh, so yeah, if uh, there are no objections, I will proceed this way. That was at least my thinking. Hopefully having, you know, branch of a branch will not make uh, too many troubles me for me while working on the, 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 the different steps for migration. So uh, uh, when I will open PRs, I will ask for a kind of early review. I already had on this PR a review from some of uh, the people, so Jakub, Federico, and Tina. Uh, maybe it was the first pass um, done a long time ago. So maybe now that I consider this phase done, uh, having a more yeah, deeper pass could be useful. But not on this PR. I think I will open another one. Uh, so, Paolo, uh, one question. So, why can we 
merge into uh, our main branch piece by piece and get in by protected by a gate or something so that you don't have to work in a separate branch. Yeah, the main problem that we... No, I was just saying the main problem that we have is about not having the Kafka release, which works uh, with migration, kind of. So even if we have this behind, behind the gate, uh, even if I, I'm not sure we should have the migration behind the gate, if you enable the gate, we don't have the Kafka, the, the right Kafka version in the in the official stream at the repo, right? Sorry, Jakub. No, I just wanted to say basically the same that you cannot feature gate something what essentially doesn't work because waiting for some other dependency like Kafka. Because essentially you would be merging code which cannot be really tested and doesn't really work. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, what I have proposed, Luke, is it, so is a plan for not getting stuck and waiting for, I don't know, February, right, for Kafka 3.7. So it's something that allows me to continue to work so that at some point I will uh, test everything with, uh, I don't know, a release candidate uh, of uh, 3.7 before it, it's released. But meantime, I can work, right, on, on this and not waiting. Paul, I think the plan is fine, but you should just plan with it that there will have to be still another PR or another review round when merging your branch into the main branch yeah. in February or March or whenever. Yeah, but at least in the uh, meanwhile, I can ask on this, let's say, teeny PRs. They are not teeny, but uh, yeah, to review in order to have a kind of early review. Yes, but in the end, I will have uh, a the bigger one uh, against the main after the Kafka release, but maybe the users who already reviewed the code along the, the way, uh, maybe the comments or the feedback will be less, the review will be simpler. So that is my expectation or my hope. In another option you may consider is whether you have a <laughs> stuff you can merge now that does not depend on the new Kafka, like, you know, a bunch of utility classes or objects uh, that can be re reviewed on that side, you know, and that will be used by the next PR that depends on Kafka 3.7. Uh, yeah, the thing is, maybe it's difficult to break this down in PR that makes sense now without the overall migration process. Uh, so it was already hard having this because of the poor documentation in Kafka. And uh, so I'm not sure if breaking this down will make life easier for me. For you, probably not, but for, I mean, uh, I mean I'm not streaming the maintenance, uh, but for Kafka, we, we often would do it this way. So like we've had a bunch of object classes that are just unused. But that's like a, a 500 line PR, that's you know, something you can review and uh, and then another PR later that uses those classes. And then, uh, but I mean, if the stream Z maintenance are happy with like a, a few thousand line PR, then that, that's fine. What, what could be done, uh, but I'm not sure I will. <laughs> is um so uh there is here a change in the kafka agent exposing some metrics for the migration so maybe that could be a really simple pr code that of course will be there but not used in the in the end the other one could be having because there is a class handling the state machine of the migration having uh, a kind of state machine uh, handling just two state so zookeeper or craft and not all the states in between so adding the handling of the states in between with the, another PR. But uh, it's not just about, so the code about the state machine is, uh, of course, um, uh, limited to one class. The thing is that uh, configuration and how the things, yes, are configured on brokers and controllers are instead into the model class of 
the Kafka cluster. So, uh, yeah, changing them right now at least sounds not so simple uh, to me. So, yeah, for now I will leave this way. Okay, brother. Okay, anything more to this? If not, then the next section are proposals. There are no new proposals, but I think Mikhail did some updates to his metric report proposal. So if anyone is interested in the metrics, then that might be the thing to check out. Yeah, I believe I've addressed all the comments uh, that were left by you and, uh, and Keith. So if anybody has time, please take a look. Thanks. Okay, if nobody has any other proposal to discuss. No, just one thing. Sorry, Jakob, just one thing to, to, to close yeah, the discussion about my migration, sorry. Um, the other stuff that, uh, so the other thing that, um, that helps me to have uh, PR or migration open and uh, is about uh, getting warning about conflicts uh, about if something around migrate so around the code of the migration was changed on main at uh, in these weeks it helped me to to understand that some pr was uh, kind of uh, breaking my work on migration so i was able to identify what was changed thanks to even the conflicts and uh so and update my pr accordingly so this is another if i merge now something it could uh, so it could skip from my eyes, if someone with the PR changed some code and then uh, suddenly I have the migration not working anymore. So yeah, it's it's a complex thing and every conflicts highlighting with a open PR would kind of help me on, uh, yeah, on identifying code changes that are breaking stuff. Yeah, sorry, just to, to close this uh, discussion. Okay, issue triage. So the first thing to triage is this thing about the Grafana version update from Kate. Kate, I think last time it wasn't really clear to us what does the last command me command mean or doesn't mean. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I can talk to that. Basically, so I was looking at updating to a new enough version of Grafana that we can update to the new time series graphs rather than the old um, graph, graphs. Um, the reason being that at some point Grafana will remove support for it. So if that happens, it would mean that our charts would stop our dashboards would stop working in those newer versions of Grafana. Um, but when I was doing that, um, basically, if we want to move to a version of Grafana that has the time series, but is still Apache licensed, the version we have to move to is 7.5.17 and time series is in beta in 7.5.17. So it's not a, like full GA version, which means that not all of the features that were supported in the graph versions are supported in time series yet. If you go to the newer versions of Grafana, they are fully supported. But because I was looking at a version that meant we were still in the Apache license, 7.5.17 was the version I was looking at. And so the upshot of it is that the option to display graphs as stacked versus not stacked isn't something that they'd implemented in 7.5.17. And we do have a bunch of 
panels in our dashboards where we've chosen to display them as stacked because we felt that that was a better way for people to parse the information. So if we decided to update to 7.5.17, we wouldn't be able to have the dashboards look exactly the same as they do today. Any of the panels that are currently showing stacked where they have rather than like two lines next to each other, they're like on top of each other to show kind of the overall level, we wouldn't be able to have that, which I, to me, it, it's not obvious that it then makes sense to go forward because I think for some of those panels, having them stacked is very beneficial for parsing. So should we close it? Is that basically what you are suggesting? Yeah, I guess what I, yeah. Um, my personal opinion, I think is maybe we close and say, okay, let's worry about this if Grafana actually removes support for Graph. Um, but it might be that I'm over um, assuming how important having it as stacked is. No, I think it makes sense to me. I just hope that when Grafana stops supporting the old ones, we will be already using Perses. Yeah, hopefully we will have moved on enough that, and it, at the moment, if you use the latest version of Grafana, when you originally load the dashboards, it's, it's not a bad experience. It's when you try and edit the panels is when you see the deprecated message. So it's not like you load a dashboard and it says deprecated everywhere. It's only when you start digging into the panels that it says that. But, you know, if you were um, just running the dashboards as is, you probably wouldn't ever notice that it was deprecated. It's only if you were customizing it. And at that point, you could make your own decisions about which version of Grafana and updating. And the new version of Drupalfana let you migrate easily. So I think for a user, it, it is fine. But yeah, it's a bit of a shame. But there we go. So my question is our general issue. Uh, yeah, raise it by this other issue. Uh, we are now moving uh, in a direction where we have to stop using Grafana because of the, the license change. So it means that now we are stuck on this latest, maybe if we want 7.5.17, which is the last one with the Apache license, as far as understood. And then we cannot move forward with the new Grafana versions. Yes, yeah, 7.5.17 is the last one they released with the Apache license. So, I um, mean, yeah, I don't know what it means for the project if we put out dashboards I that... I think it's complicated. I don't think I don't think the dashboard JSONs are necessarily licensed. So I don't think we are affected by the license in the sense that we cannot have the dashboards only using much newer versions of the Grafana. But the issue is that the licensing might limit the users on what they want or can use. So if you write the dashboards only for a newer version of Grafana, it might mean that a lot of the users will not be able to use them because they will not be able to use the newer version of Grafana. Yeah, which is something that we don't want actually. So it's kind of a blocking us to yeah. so, use the newer so version. So it's of not Grafana. necessarily that we cannot do this to the, to the dashboards for some licensing reasons, yeah, such okay. as you cannot Users. keep the JSONs for the new version of Grafana in our repo, but it might negatively impact the users. Yes. Yeah, so it sounds to me that the future is not that bright because maybe at some point some panels will be deprecated and uh, more than the one that was mentioned by Kate. So our dashboard will start not work anymore if you don't update to the new well, Grafana. Yeah, but if they still work today, then maybe that's the problem future. Us will have to deal with. Yeah. I did and... look and I couldn't find any date for when they're going to remove support. Deprecated obviously implies they might do at some point, but I couldn't find any sort of statement from Gofana that said when they would remove support for the old graph panels. 
So even if it's a problem that we will deal with in the future, at some point, if they remove some component and not support it anymore, we have to remove Grafana in the end, our sub Grafana support. And well, I think, it, I think it depends, but in general, like, as I mentioned before, there is this project called Perses, which tries to develop an open source alternative under the CNCF umbrella. I don't think it's necessarily ready for prime time yet. So I'm not suggesting we should move to that right now, but hopefully as the time goes on, as Grafana removes support for these charts, then that will also make sure to be a more open alternative. Do you know if there is any kind of compatibility with Grafana or a kind of migration guide? I don't think so, or I don't know. I didn't study it in that much detail. I know there is a bit more ideas to be a bit more Kubernetes native by using things such as CRDs and so on. But I do not know all the details. Okay. And it's, uh, you know, if, uh, yeah, I'm looking at the CNCF website, if it's a sandbox or incubation project. I added the link to the chat. Okay, thanks. So back to the triage. So I guess it makes sense to close this for now. Yeah, I think so. And we can always circle back around if something changes. Okay, not hearing any objections. No. Okay, the next issue is about connect pods being restarted. And I don't think we got any more information from last time. So we are going to close it, I guess. Yes. Okay, the next one is something I basically opened as a follow-up to one of the issues, which, which we discussed last time in the triage. Uh, it's about considering and adding support for the self-validation rules into our CRDs. I think that could be useful, but we should probably think about how to generate it from the custom resource from, from the from the API Java files and where exactly to use them and so on. So it so, will be a work on the CRD generator, right? Mostly. Yeah, but also a bit understanding of what can it do, how can it scale, and so on, I guess. I'm not sure if it should have a proposal or not have a proposal. It seems like if you pick up just one of these things, then you can do something very easily. And I'm not sure how the proposal would look like. So I don't know. What others think?
well you are not not going to when i think about proposal you are not uh, kind of adding new api or breaking api or changing api we are adding validation on the api side maybe it will not need the proposal mm, yeah you are not changing the api but in a sense i think it's a bit complicated change especially with how you generate those rules out of the custom resource definitions that i'm not sure that doesn't deserve a proposal yeah i think because, we, we are we are on a borderline because it might mean new annotations on the api classes or things like that and so on but yeah as i said also you can see there's something what you can kind of implement step by step and uh, and some of the steps might be super simple and might not make sense at all for a proposal so so i don't know I guess we could say might need proposal. Yeah. So like this. Yep. What labels are we going to give it? I guess help wanted. Yes. Do we give it the needs proposal label or? Well, it's not mandatory, right? So. Okay. Then the next issue is something I started and it covers more or less two things around the mirror maker to assembly operator. First, it doesn't seem to have any test coverage for how it works with the connectors for mirror maker two. Uh, it has the test coverage for how it creates the pods and so on, but not for the, for how it generates the connectors out of the CRD. And also this particle functionality seems to be quite heavily baked into the assembly operator, where it doesn't seem to be that useful for the testing for me because you have to run the whole assembly operator i wonder if it can be factored out into some separate class or some utility methods and then it will be as a side effect also much easier to to test it so i basically run into this when i found out that the the stopped state doesn't work for the mirror maker 2 connectors uh, so this seems like something what might not be completely hard also it's probably not completely simple but can improve the test coverage for the future i think that makes sense but I will not set as a kind of a high priority. So maybe help wanted. <clears throat> oh, 
okay. Then this one is just a tracker for one of the issues in the craft mode. When the cluster gets pending, when uh, when all the nodes, mixed nodes in the craft cluster get pending, then the Kafka roller has issues recovering from it. So I guess this is something we want to improve. Yeah, I definitely think this is an issue we should fix. Yeah. But I'm not sure it makes sense to mark it as a help wanted or something, probably, or... Um, no, we definitely shouldn't <laughs> mark it as a good start. I, I, think, I think it's probably safest to keep it and then um, someone who's already familiar in the Kafka roller space can hopefully make it easiest. Okay. So this is a bug which I found in the Kafka roller that is unrelated to craft. But basically when the pods are pending, like in the previous issue, but this happened basically even outside of craft, then the Kafka roller detects it correctly, but it used this message where it says that uh, message where it basically says that it giving up on the node after 10 attempts with total delay between attempts of 127,000 of milliseconds but it essentially takes from start till end less than a second so it doesn't really look like it took somewhere the one 120,000 milliseconds. So I think this is something where the message can be improved. But it doesn't seem to have any kind of, I don't think it has any any issue in terms of functionality, but if nothing else, the message seems to be super confusing. So I guess it's not a high priority, but we should try to fix it as well. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Okay, then... Uh... Next issue is again about craft and it's about the issues with the scale up and scale down of the controller nodes. Uh, I think we already discussed that and said at this point we will wait for the keep 853 in Kafka to be implemented. It should allow this to be done. So I guess we just confirm it here. Yes. Agree. Another craft issue this time it's about the uh, 
Kafka roller struggling when the broker role is added to controller only nodes, where it seems like uh, from the error, like it's trying to connect to the 9091 port, which is not yet available. Uh, it rolls eventually, but it goes through some timeout. So it sounds like something where it'd be nice to have some improvement as well. So I think this is because the Kafka roller uses um, node ref object. And I saw you merge the PR um, showing the assigned roles, the current assigned role rather than, because I think node ref is what yeah. comes from the desired state, right? Yeah, I'm not sure the PR, I, I thought about it a bit more and I'm not sure the PR is, I merge is that useful for that because it shows the node pool level and not the pod level. So if the Kafka roller fails in the middle, it might get inconsistent. But what I actually realized is that uh, the pods themselves, they have a labels which can be used to identify if the pod is currently set up as a controller, as a broker, or as a both. So I was wondering at some point the roller basically has the pod definition for the for the node. And I think the way we could do this to be most safe is if there it basically reads from the pod what the labels are and based on that it identifies whether the node is currently set up as a as a controller or broker or or both and then use that information to roll it because that's stored per pod so even if the roller fails somewhere in the middle it will be able to recover this information for the various nodes okay um i can Start looking into that. Um, the other thing I was thinking about was whether you can describe the config of the broker. Um, once controller can talk to, well, this is mixed notes, so it doesn't matter. But if you can get that information from the admin API, because you have process roles as a configuration there, so that'd be another option. Yeah, I guess that could be useful as well. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we want to look into this. So like this, I guess. Yep. Yep, and you have typo for determine. The next issue, and I'm actually already looking into this, is that today if you change the roles of the mix nodes to controller only nodes without moving all the partitions first, 
and then you can essentially block the operator and the rolling updates because you cause the topics to be permanently unreplicated. So we should extend the the check which we already have for scale down to the changes of the roles and try to prevent situations like this until the node is uh, is emptied. So I guess that makes sense to implement as well. Yep. And the last issue is around JBot support. So I think we want to get that done as well, all to, I guess. That will be only done in Kafka 3.7, but we want to keep this. Yeah, sure. And I guess that should be it for the triage. Anyone wants to discuss any other issues? No, that was long today. Okay, so the next thing from last time is around the archiving of the topic encryption project. Last time we said that we will give everyone two more weeks to raise any comments, but I'm not aware of of anything, so I guess we should just archive it. Or everyone agrees, or nobody disagrees, I guess. So in that case, the next point is around the MQTT bridge. Over to you, Paolo. Yeah, so so it was not a high priority thing. And uh, as you know, from the LFX mentoring, we have got a kind of POC, which kind of works. Uh, but last days there was a user opening a yeah a pull request in order to have uh, customized uh, for deploying the bridge and yeah after the discussion it seems that this guy is going to use the NQTT bridge in uh, his own uh, use case uh, so we were start to think um, if a first release would make sense. Even because our student, uh, the student who developed the bridge, uh, engaged with us on the StreamZ Dev channel, if I remember correctly, he would like to write a blog post. And even Jakub raised the point that maybe, yeah, in order to allow also people to use the bridge if they want to follow the article, etc., uh, etc., et having a release would make sense. So, so just to be clear, I, I don't think it's necessarily a blocker for the blog post not having a release. I just think that the value of the blog post would be much smaller if there is no release because like you read about this project, you think it's cool, and then you go to the GitHub repository and you found out it has no releases. You have to build it for yourself to use it and so on. So like... Do you really use it or do you just say, yeah, okay, maybe next year? No, yeah, so, but I, so I totally agree. So that's more the issue I have, yeah. Yeah, 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 I, I, I totally agree with you. So, uh, yeah, I see some questions here. Maybe you you were the one added, um, if there yeah, are any I, open issues or... 
I edit those, I think it would be nice to have some idea about some kind of roadmap or plan in terms of what features are missing, what features might be added in the future, or if it's complete, even saying like, yeah, this is what we expect to have and we currently don't plan to add any more features or something like that. So I think that would be one good thing to understand. Yeah, see, so I would say when we talk about features here, we mean something like bigger features, like connecting via TLS, for example, to the NQTT or or authentication, authorization. I guess that we are in the same shape of the HTTP bridge, where from the client facing side, uh, there is not that much, right? Um, authentication and all the other stuff can be done uh, through the bridge and Kafka. Um, yeah, right now I cannot think of, of a big things missing. So you can configure the, let's call I don't know, the routes to the mapping from NQTT topics to, to Kafka topic. Uh, and, um, so I can take a look. I don't think there are big things missing and maybe at zero one zero could make sense somehow. It's anyway, yeah, the way that we start to release everything in streams in the end, even the bridge at the beginning was missing a lot of stuff, right? The HTTP one. So, so for me, it's a bit hard to judge the missing features because I never used MQTT and I don't know anything about it. But I think in general, it would be good to have understanding of the future of the project. So. I'm not necessarily saying there are missing features. I'm not necessarily saying there should be a huge roadmap of things we plan to do. What I'm basically saying is that I think it would be good to have, and maybe it is somewhere there and I just missed it, that it would be good to have an understanding of what the future plans are. And if the current plan is that it is what it is, and we don't necessarily plan to add more features to it anytime soon, then, yeah, if you think that's sufficient for something, then it's completely fine with me, but it would be great to have that clear to the users to not expect 0 0.2 release one month later and 0 0.3 release two months later with some new features and so on. Yeah, to be honest, I don't know the future uh, as well, because uh, so I would like uh, to get, you know, maybe a release will will show us, uh, will show us uh, how, uh, maybe how many people, how many users uh, start to use it, because right now it's kind of difficult to understand if this is really useful to the community. If no one is going to use NQTT with Kafka this way, uh they are just using an nqtt broker outside and then you know kafka connect bridging to kafka which is totally different from the approach you have with the nqtt bridge maybe having a first release could help to understand that uh yeah but it doesn't mean that then we will have uh, every two or three months a new release of course yeah you know it's a new kid in town so we don't know how much it will be used. We didn't know the same for the HTTP bridge and we discovered that along the way. Yeah, so I mean, maybe that can be somehow described there in the in the release or something that, yeah, it remains to be seen what the future is and that we expect feedback from the users and so on. Yeah. Like it's the bit catch twenty two, right? If we don't seem to invest in it, uh, why would people adopt it? I mean, I think today we don't have examples for it. I don't know how well it is tested, or you know, I'm not sure how or, or good is the documentation. So it's going to be hard to adopt it. And if we don't invest in it, uh, uh, it's going to be harder for users to say, okay, this is production ready. I'm going to adopt it.
Well, it's uh, so it could be even a kind of egg and chicken problem where uh, we well, but, but invest. When you two is but the same it's chicken and egg. It's like if you don't invest in it, people don't adopt it. But yeah, don't yeah, <laughs> I know. So the other point I had is that if nothing else, it's missing the CI CD pipelines for the releases. Uh, no, I was just checking. I see we we created the, the, the build pipeline, the release pipeline, and the CV rebuild pipeline. In Did we? Yeah. I was just checking near the link, if you want to Azure. There are all the three of them. And I also yeah. tested for a... Okay, okay, yeah, I, guess that, yeah, I guess that's fine. And then I guess my last question was whether you would add it to the install directory in the operators, like we have the Drain canary, Cleaner, right? for example, or... Do we have the canary in the install directory? I think so. I think we do as well, yeah. Yeah, that will be another thing to do if uh, we decide to have a release, yes. Well, it's a question whether you want to do it or not. Well, maybe it would make the user understanding that yeah, it's something that they can use if it's in the operator repo, but it's yeah, not it's mandatory, a, right? It, it's a bit as Mikael said, right? Like it's yeah, advertisement and it can help you get more users to try it out. It could be also a trap if you get someone to use it and then you say, oh, not enough users there. I don't have enough time or we don't have enough time to work on it. Let's let's get rid of it. So, so but it's more a question. I don't really have an opinion on it. So maybe yeah, it's something maybe to neither. think about. Yes. But in general, if the CI pipelines are there, then I guess you can just do the release if you want. Yeah, I will try to put down a kind of roadmap uh, and for my yeah, NQTT knowledge uh, to check what it's really missing from an NQTT point of view. Uh, if it's something really as a blocker for the release or we can just start with the zero one. Maybe even understanding if the the guy who worked on this is inter uh, is interested to invest his time to improve the bridge as well as a yeah maybe becoming then a component owner in the future. Okay, we are running out of time. Anything else to that? So I guess you prepare the roadmap and list of any possible missing features, and then we get back to it next time, or, or yeah. we get to it on Slack because the next call will be in one month. So if needed, we can, I guess, get to it earlier on yeah. Slack and, and proceed with the release. About the, the last point, uh, because we are running out of time, just uh, a few seconds to update the community. Uh, you know, we have the, 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 the incubation process, uh, so our PR opened, but uh, it seems that our sponsor would like to move forward in order to have uh, the document, the due diligence document ready uh, by the end of the month, beginning of January, because there will be TOC election in January. So it could uh, yeah, slow down stuff. Uh, so uh, me, Jakub, and Tom uh, worked on the um, on the due diligence document. We are waiting for um, feedback and review from the the TOC sponsor, and uh, also uh, we got in touch with some adopters who are interested to have the interview because one of the requirements is having people, you know, sharing uh, their story or use case with the 
uh, CNCF TOC members uh, in order to yeah to show that StreamZ is ready to be incubation is uh, production ready they are using in production so I got in touch with some of them and now the names are available to the TOC sponsor and you will yeah reach them out in order to to have these interviews so I'm just hoping that things will move forward uh, by the end of December and the discussion will start in the community about if StreamZ deserves to be incubation or not or at least it has the requirements. Okay. Anyone has any other business? Minding we are already three minutes over. Then if not, thanks a lot for joining the community call and have a nice Christmas and happy new year and see you in 2024. Thanks. Thanks you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks very much. Bye all.